Vroom, vroom, vroom. Oh, yeah, baby. Now let's lean into this corner. Yeah. Lean. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh shit. Yeah. And this is why you buy an Indian motorcycle, folks, because you got to push the Harley home. Welcome back to Motoblade, everyone. Today we are at Essex Junction, Vermont, Green Mountain Harley-Davidson. These guys are awesome. They're hooking me up with a tri-glide to take out for a ride. Nice sound system. I got front and rear sound system. This bike would be absolutely fantastic for road tripping. And it's got the comfy backrest for your passengers. You even got like outlets back here for plugging crap in. This is just overkill. I love it. So let's ride. Sound system is not bad at all. It's quite nice actually. And the windscreen in front is enough to block all the wind in front of me. So it keeps it fairly quiet. I can hear the music well. It's a lot better than I think the sound system on the Street Glide. I don't know if there's a bigger amp or if they have different speakers in this one, but the audio on the Tri Glide is definitely better than on the Street Glide. Now, there can be another reason for that, and that is behind me on the passenger seat, there are two more built in speakers. So it's not just these two up front here, I've got surround sound going. So I got twice the power coming at me. What's up, dude? How's it going? And uh, yeah. So the sound is phenomenal. It, it beats my bike, definitely beats the Indian Chieftain, and not much beats the Indian Chieftain sound system. But having those extra speakers behind me really helps. This is just the weirdest thing, like not having my feet on the ground at a red light. Like what the hell is this? Why, why don't I have to hold myself up? So if you guys have watched any of my reviews about motorcycles on this channel, you know what my criteria are. That a bike has to pass to be worthy. Obviously this is a trike, it's a little bit different, but the point still stands. Oh dear goodness, I am not used to turning this thing. Wow. That was a horrible turn. Okay, so you guys know what my criteria are. First and foremost, the bike has to be comfortable. That is the first thing I noticed when I sat on this bike. It is the most comfortable thing I've ever ridden. And I've ridden a lot, and I've ridden all of Harley's touring lineup, and Indian's touring lineup, but this bike, the seat is the most comfortable thing I've ever experienced. It just has a nice feel to it. It's wide, it's cushy, it supports my back. It comes like a quarter of the way up my back and supports my lower lumbar area. I could ride this thing all day, and that's the intent. You should be able to take this as a very long cross-country touring ride. Uh, but the comfort is awesome. Now the position is a bit weird because I feel like my feet should be up front more, whereas they really kind of come straight down and make a perfect 90 degree bend here on the bike. I have a heel toe shifter. I've got front fairings to protect my legs. Behind me, the passenger seat, I will sit in that when I get back and give you guys a review on what that feels like as far as comfort. But the passenger seat looks super comfy. It's got a nice wraparound backrest and it's got speakers built in back there so your passenger can also hear the music loud and clear. So there's a lot of comfort to this bike. I can be comfy on here for many, many, many hours. More so than even riding my motorcycle, which I think is really comfortable, but the support that this bike gives my back and just the position of everything, it's, it's made for long hauling. Now, after comfort comes handling, and that is where we are going to dock this thing a lot. The handling of this is so bizarre I already mentioned that, but my turns are absolutely horrible. I feel like I have to use every bit of muscle in my arms, in my forearms, to push this bike through a turn. It's not fun. It's not like a motorcycle where you can lean it with a finger on the handlebar and just drop into the corner. This thing, you're just, you, you can't take the turn with too much speed, otherwise you gotta drop it back like I just did. The turn is rough because it's not like a bike. 
because the bike assists you when you drop into a corner. The trike, you have no assist. It's like turning a car, but without power steering. And the physics of it, because it's three wheels instead of four, if you do it too fast, you could flip it. It's just weird. I don't like the handling. I would get used to it, I'm sure. And when you're taking long cross-country trips, which is what this thing is kind of intended for, you're not making a whole lot of twisty turns on the highway anyway. And when you are doing twisty turns, like if you tried to take this through the tail of the dragon or whatever, you just got to slow it down. You're not going to be racing through like you will on a motorcycle. So if you thought your cruiser was slow before, hop on a trike, and the trike will necessitate that you drive slower. After handling, we come to style. That's just going to be totally subjective on the trike. Uh, some people like the look of them, some people don't. I happen to like the look of the trike. I've actually been a fan of Honda Goldwing trikes for a while. I never really thought about getting a Harley trike. You know, when I thought of Harley Davidson, trike was not the thing that came to mind. So, after riding this, yeah, I would, I would go for a Harley trike. On style alone, this is probably the best looking trike I've ever seen that's stock. I've seen some really cool trikes that people have customized the crap out of, and they look amazing. But as far as uh, just stock from the dealer, this trike's got it. I don't know what colors you can get it in. I'll put those up on the screen for you guys. So we've covered comfort, styling, handling. Let's talk power now. Power, um, well, you guys can hear that power. The speedometer only goes to 120, so that's not terribly fast. So you're not going to be flying down the road on this bike. I forget what my Chieftain goes to, but it's over 120. You have the Milwaukee 8 114 engine, so you have plenty of power, but you're not going to be flying down the road with the speed that you might have on a motorcycle. That being said, let's push it up a little bit here. That's six gear, I'm doing about 70. We're gonna slow it down because of this turn. And the handling in the turns is interesting. I'll tell you what though, you build up some good, nice uh, toning in your forearm muscles riding this thing trying to crank it through the turns. Take it on something like Tail of the Dragon, that's just your arm workout for the day. So, we came to this nice little town, and they have a little park and ride here. This park is actually pretty nice. So, I'm actually gonna get off the bike for a minute and do a little walk around. Now, down here is something else to note. You have an e-brake, or a parking brake, rather. So just push down on that. Oh, and your bike won't roll away. Or your trike. I keep saying bike. I need to get that through my head. So it's a great looking trike. Nice lighting up front. Nice leg fairings. This is the Milwaukee 8 114. So again, lots of power. But you're not going to be flying down the road doing 100 with it. Let's take a look at the storage back here. This is something that uh, it's not really one of my normal criteria for a bike. But you got some really nice storage in here with, this looks like a little liner they have down in there. You got plenty of room. Don't put more than 50 pounds in the trunk. Well, you could definitely put at least several gallons of milk in there, make an easy grocery run. Plus, you know, if you're taking a trip cross country, that's plenty of room for your bags and crap. Then in our trunk, don't put more than 25 pounds in the trunk. Oh, no, let's see. Don't put more than 30 pounds in the trunk, okay. And they got a little trunk liner in there. It's kind of nice. Accessories, manual, bags. So let's check out this passenger seat while we're at it. Just for kicks. Oh, the passenger seat is quite comfy. Sit up really high. I got handles down here. Oh yeah. Oh, you could be pleasantly comfy on this on a cross country trip. All right. This is cool. I can just turn around here and not have to like worry about walking it or dropping it or anything. I can just go in circles all day. This is actually really nice. Now 
Now, there is one other cool part to this bike. If you need an electric assist, you have it. So you can actually back up and go in reverse with this motorcycle and you have a reverse motor. Which is super nice. You just put it in neutral and then you press and hold down on this little R over here and you can go in reverse. Let's talk one more thing for this trike. The cost. The cost of this trike is like 30 grand or close to it. I'll put the exact number on the screen for you guys. But it's expensive. It's really expensive. You guys could get a really nice tricked out road glide or street glide and come out ahead. So overall, my thoughts and opinions on this bike. Is it worth it? Uh, if you have a very specific area or mission in mind. This is great for traveling. It has good safety because you're on three wheels versus two. It has traction control that you can activate, which gives you an even higher safety margin when you're riding on wet roads or if it's raining, whatever. Your passenger will feel nice and safe and secure on the back. It's great for having a second person with you. You have lots of storage space. That is fantastic. I would love to have that much space on a motorcycle to take all my crap with me or make a bigger grocery run. So the bike has its purpose. Is it going to replace my motorcycle? Uh, no. My motorcycle is more fun, in my opinion. I like dropping it in the turns. There's nothing quite like the feel of riding on two wheels and working that balance and the way your bike leans when you curve through a turn. You don't get that with the trike. You don't have the same level of thrill. Would I like to have this thing in the garage? Heck yes, I would. This would be great for taking, like, you know, wife or girlfriend or whatever on a trip to Disney World. This is fun. You have a nice, safe experience. It's comfy, and you still have the open air aspect like you would riding a motorcycle. And it's a Harley, so it's still going to be fun. Harley doesn't make anything that's not fun. It's just not going to provide you with the same experience that you get out of riding a motorcycle. So those are my thoughts and opinions on this, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. It's a big red button down there. It says subscribe. It's somewhere on the screen. Hit the bell icon next to it. That will give you guys notifications when there's new videos to watch right here on Motoblade. Now, if you guys are in Vermont or in Northeast New York, upstate New York, somewhere in the Northeast area, come by Green Mountain Harley in Essex Junction, Vermont. They're just outside of Burlington. Awesome, awesome people over there. If you haven't checked out the video I did for them for their Battle of the Kings entry this year, go check that out. I'll throw a link to it down in the description. Go vote for that bike, the Joker by Green Mountain Harley. So until next time, y'all, you know what to do out there. Be careful, ride safe, ride on. I'll catch all of you later. Deuces.